All right. New episode of Narcast coming at you. This is uh, our favorite albums from the last five years. Nick's idea. I'm pretty sure, right? Your idea, Nick, right? Yeah, if it's a good episode, it's my idea. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a bad episode, it's my idea. <laughs> no, no. no, so we decided to go through and uh, just kind of pick three each. Uh, kind of do what we always do, three each. We pick one, you know, everybody else listen to that one. And then just a couple honorable mentions that we'll throw in and hopefully keep this under uh, 14 hours. I don't know, we'll see. We did pretty good with the last one, so. Yeah, yeah I got to work in the morning, so that'll be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I was, uh, you know, typically I listen to all old stuff, even if I buy new albums, it's like reissues. And, and so there's not much new music, but then I, that I that I thought I thought, but then as I went back to, you know, get to look at, you know, maybe some of the newer newer albums I had, it was actually quite a bit, and then it, it became a little difficult for me to narrow it down to just three, and then I realized that the three of those were all began with the letter S, so it's like it was all right there. I just went, oh, this one, this one, and this one. And, well, that uh, is always the typical heavy spot for any album collection is the S's, the R's, the T's, the M's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Unless you're Nick, then, you know. <laughs> it's also, a I, I don't know how to put like the Cyrillics where I, where they go, you know. And... <laughs> oh, that's good. Did you guys have an easy or a hard time? picking yours i had a pretty difficult time because my collection is mostly 2000 plus even though we're doing you know the last five years um so i mean i think in the last for the last eight years i've probably been buying like 100 albums a year so for, from that year so uh definitely had a lot to pilfer through but i just went through my top 15 lists and kind of went through that and chose some ones that I thought were, I mean, I could have chosen other ones, but I tried to keep them varied. I could have done a lot of things that were good, but I didn't want to have all one genre. So I mixed up the genres a bit. Very cool. Yeah, I guess we can uh, jump right into that. And we'll, uh, you know what? We'll start at the bottom. Well, bottom for me with Jason. Metal King. You um, first. Interesting. The, the Metal King. I'm here on the upper right on my view. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with my number three. My number three since 2016. Really, the only. I guess the only general comment I have is, you, you know, in the past three months, I, I just I got back on social media again. I got back on Facebook, and there's this old radio station that used to rule the radio airwaves and. Southern California called KMT, and it was one of those groups that I've joined. And you just got all these older people, you know, since it's an it was an indie station, and it died. It died Valentine's Day, nineteen eighty seven. So the radio station. We're talking gone. last five years, not last thirty five years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So anyways, the, the comments, they're always, everybody's just Led Zeppelin all the time. You know, new music, new music today sucks. You know, music after 2000, it's all shit. And, you know, I, I put on a comment, I'm like, everybody's just got this. Everybody needs, needs to stop being a grandfather and just search the music because there's amazing music out there that's going on today. You just need to find it, people. Stop listening. Not stop listening, but yes, Led Zeppelin's a great band. But, oh my God, there are others. So <laughs> that's so blue hair right there. Yeah. Just Zeppelin totally. only. Totally. I know what you're talking yeah. about, though, Jason. So a... what you're about to tell us is that you picked a Greta Van Fleet album for your <laughs> fucking album, right? Well, no, that's. The thing is, no, I, belong, I belong to a Facebook group for WMMS in, in Cle out of Cleveland, which there's still a station, but this is like the old school when it was called the Buzzard. 
And it's like the classic, they're the stage from the broke rush in the States. And so it's just a bunch of old people that say the same stuff. Yeah. There's no good music. There's not, or if they mention a new band, it's either like Greta Van Fleet or it's Buck Cherry. And I'm always just like, <laughs> get on the internet, man. Just like, go, just search YouTube. There's so many good bands out there. That so out on. Out there. And so, uh, We've talked about this band in the past before. I've had you listen to these guys before. My number three since the year 2016 is uh, the traditional metal band out of Fresno. Um, and that is Haunt with Mind Freeze. Uh, the brainchild, once again, is Trevor William Church, the uh, son of Bill, the electric church. Um, <laughs> And uh, we, we, we talked about his vocals on, on the past episode and this band just, they just totally worked for me. Um, just right up my alley. If they were around in 88, I would just totally have been listening to them. He's, uh, he sort of like has his own niche and his music works and he has his own record label now, and he's just putting out, last year he put out three albums, and uh, he, he already has another one out this year, and according to his uh, Facebook page uh, last week, he's written another nine songs ready to go for the next album. And now that COVID is ending, he found himself a drummer. He found himself a bass player. So he is going to start touring. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. So one of the newer bands that I've really appreciated that sound old school. And, and that's Hawk with Mind Freeze. Dude, I, I jammed it. I, I jammed it again today. The song Hearts on Fire, that second track. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Musically, dude, it's right on, man. It's I yeah. just keep Spot on. I'm just like, it just needs it reminds I was trying to think vocally, what does this remind me of? And then it reminded me of a band named Hour of Thirteen. Oh man. Yeah, okay, you know that. And uh Phil Swanson's the singer. I can't stand him. I don't think he has personality. I don't think he's terrible. But he doesn't have like any power or any real emotion. It's just kind of, uh, 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 you know, to me. And I, the whole time with Han, I was just like, man, if he just had a, an actual vocalist and just let him focus on writing all the music and then get somebody to, hey, come on in, do the vocals. Uh, this is my band. I'm doing everything else. But I actually wrote it down. It's on my list to buy because I Mind Freeze. I think the other album was that a newer it, one? No, that was the, it, that was an older one. If Icarus Could Fly was 2019. Okay, this yeah. Mind Freeze. I wrote it down. It's on my list to get because as soon as that second song came on, I was just like, yeah, musically, just a, it's just awesome, man. Yeah, and the songs, you know, they're not too long. They're three and a half minute bangers. He knows not to go too long with it. There are nine songs. It's a half hour. He goes in, writes the music, and gets out. You know, so it doesn't stay too long. You know. How are you going to reconcile that with one of your other choices? <laughs> different, different, different form of music. Gotcha. Different, different form of music. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm with uh, Kip on this one. I liked it more than Icarus. Very, you know, similar, but I thought it had some better hooks for sure. I liked the production a bit more. And yeah, again, like, fuck, I just, I could headbang to that shit all day. That's a band I think I have a great time seeing them live. Just to have, have a beer in my hand, just headbang, because the riffs are so damn catchy and so melodic. Yeah. Great musicianship. And it was just like... It's just, it's, it's one of those bands you know exactly what you're getting and you don't care if it doesn't change all that much. Just just give me this, please. And like and just 45 minutes of watching them just play live would be so rad because then I can overlook vocals a bit. <laughs> and when he does tour in festivals, guys, 
he 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 goes with those uh, uh, with those other traditional bands. He, the guy worships Angel Witch, Sirith on Goal. He tours with Visigoth. Just all of those, just those traditional bands. And uh, you know, I just man, I like that stuff. No, because of that, listening to those on YouTube, there's a cool uh, YouTube page uh, that's this is called like just New Wave of American Traditional Metal or just Amer New yeah. Wave of Traditional Metal, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And because of that, I clicked on that page and then just went through an ass ton of other links that they had. And it's really cool to hear that 80s sound come back without being a total ripoff. It's, it's definitely an homage. But it's not, you know, it's not, it's not cookie cutter. I mean, there are some, but I found, I found some other gems in there too, just by clicking on that YouTube link. Jason, you checked out the band Ranger. Oh, Ranger, that sounds familiar. Look them up. Nick? They're European. Night, Night Ranger? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Nick, no. Nick, Nick just put a picture on our on our website with the band Warrior Path, and I think that's a band that would just. Wow. fit right into a festival with haunt that that type of music did, did you listen to warrior path i did listen to warrior path did enjoy yeah. it yeah. yeah exactly jason you need to uh, pat said ranger you need to get on ranger big time okay. i think they're finnish speed metal just awesome awesome yeah. so I, I think you'll dig it a lot not much I can add to the haunt discussion because we kind of talked about them in that other episode and then also kind of what you guys said. But I did enjoy this album a little more because I listened to it more times than the previous one. And you were right, Jason, too, as far as the time, because like I could put it on while I was, you know, getting ready to go to work. And then by the time I'm at work, it's over. Done. You You're know? done with it. <laughs> and I, I do. I love the logo and I love the album cover. Yeah. I mean, the album yeah. cover is awesome. I mean, it's not shitty in the slightest. <laughs> Very cool. Who's next? It's up to you, MC. Let's go, Pat. All right. This was hard for me because I just kind of like I mentioned prior to starting, um, last handful of years, I just haven't been making lists like I used to. And with streaming becoming more available, I've still I still buy albums of bands I really like or albums I really like, but I just don't have a good mechanism for cataloging them. So I really had to dig through Wikipedia and I had to look through the Brave Board Hall of Fame to look at yeah. how the albums panned out for various years and scroll through and see which ones of these did I buy, which ones did I like, which ones were at the top of my list. And it was hard. So the first one not the first one, but the first one I'm going to talk about that came to mind was uh, a band that had fallen kind of by the wayside for me. I'd bought everything they'd released up until their second to last album. And I don't think I would have even bought this, but I saw a sample of the opening track to this album and it fucking blew me away. And that's uh, Bork Nagar's True North from 2019. Um, kind of a band for Larson that reminds me an, another band that he would like would be maybe Enslaved since he's doing this thing where he's starting with recent albums and working back because they remind me a lot of Enslaved and how they've evolved or devolved or changed over the years, gotten more clean, but still maintain a few of their earlier elements. Um, but this album, they've always had, not always, but, you know, the last slew of years had a lot of clean and rough vocals mixed in and the opening track thunderous is what i heard uh when this album came out and that instantly made me buy it and you know when i got it and listened to the whole thing i was totally blown away second track up north sounds like it's an homage to uriah Heep almost a little yes. heavier, of course yes. but the 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 org the keys and just everything about it, it's a little upbeat and happy sounding. Yeah. And to me, the the first two tracks and the last two tracks, the uh, voice title and voices, the closing tracks. So the first two and the last two are perfect bookends to the album. Everything in the middle is awesome too, but this, something on this album just, 
it reminded me of when Enslaved did their kind of shift with a lot more mixing of clean and dirty vocals. And I love that era of Enslaved. And, you know, it, it just had to be included on there for me. Yeah, it's, I can't believe because <laughs> Bokenegar to me kind of fell into a rut after Empiricism, the first album of Vintersorg. Mm -hmm. Like Epic was kind of whatever, and Erd and Universal didn't do much for me. When they came out with Winter Thrice, the album before True North, I'm like, oh my God, this band is back. And then that next, this album came out like only two years later. I'm like, oh, again, another one? And it freaking was even better than uh, Winter Thrice. Oh my God, that album is freaking so good. Like you said, that song Voices. And <laughs> one of the things I love about that band is like, especially on Winter Thrice, they had all four of their vocalists that they've, have been in the band, like on that album. So even this one didn't have Garm or Vintersorg, but just being able to go between Lars Needland, the keyboard player who sings Voices and some of the other songs and having freaking Vortex as a vocalist, like you're just, you can't write a bad song with those guys singing for your band. They're both so incredible. Yeah, and when and this one this one came out, it forced me to go back, and I still haven't bought Winter Thrice, but I will because I just need to have it because I've got all the rest. And uh, yeah, it's the, the, now I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, I mean it's just incredible. I can't believe that Oyston, the main guy in Borkner, like you got you got the right songs for Garm, Vintersorg, Vortex, and the keyboard player. Uh, uh, like, said his name earlier i forgot it lars he's it's just incredible the, the talent in that band and they don't like show off they're not like too ridiculous to, like they're not like a super group or anything they just write badass songs yeah when i listened to it i had it on i don't own it so i was i listened to it on amazon music and i put uh shuffle play just going through all the songs and you're right it was like very Bork Nagar, but it was just updated. There was different stuff, like it hooked me. But then I kind of forgot that it was on, and then the song Up North came on. And I was like, sometimes when you finish the album, it'll automatically, Amazon Music will start the station and just play stuff that's like it. And I just went, killer, dude, who is this? And I picked it up and looked, and I was like, holy shit. It's still Bork Nagar, like so. I, I, that was my favorite track up north, Bobby. Because it, I don't, I hate using the word accessible, but the vocals were great. It was like it was really upbeat and kind of like 70s hard rock ish. Yeah, when he's really, like, whoa, 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 <laughs> yeah, like not in an easy way at all. It was just really well done. And uh, I honestly haven't listened to this band in years. I mean, I know that, you know, Nick is really into them big time. You know, I have a good buddy that is, a, like, obsessed with this band. And the last one I ever heard was Empiricism, ever. So I like this one. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to pull a Jason new one, and I'm just going to start going back. And checking them out but i'll keep in mind nick that you said that they kind of went down a little it bit they just kind of flattened out and it was yeah it was... nothing bad but nothing memorable that's like when Vinters that's when like vinner sword was like in 15 bands like <clears throat> and like neil and lars neil was also like doing soul fold a lot there's just like i think they're all just spread too thin but speaking of that's another thing i love about that man because like there's like everyone's a songwriter like Oyston writes like maybe six of the ten songs per album, but then you have Lars and Vortex contributing too. So it's not just like a one guy show. There's so every song that's why Up North sounds so weird because it's a Vortex song, right? But you know, Oyston still just said that's it's not really doesn't sound like it. that song's so damn good. We're recording that. <laughs> Vortex is in Dimu, isn't he? He was until like 2015 or something. Okay, because I think. I kept thinking it was Galder that was doing this, but I actually think I remember Galder's bald the guy from Old Man's Child. So yeah. it was Vortex, super long hair, really, really curly hair. Yeah, and he was the one that they, when Dimu was playing, they were just banging out. That's when I saw him the one, the second time I saw him live, and he was bobbing his head 
and yeah. someone when he was playing. And everybody was like, what's this guy doing, man? It doesn't go with the music. And I'm like, I don't know. It's pretty funny. But uh, like the, the other thing, too, is like Borkin guys, other like classic song that people love is uh, Colossus from their fourth album, Quintessence. And that's a that's a, a Vortex song as well. So ICS Vortex. ICS Vortex. By the way, his solo album was kind of disappointing to me because I was expecting a lot of rippers like that it was kind of plotting but still good to listen to just i could listen to that guy sing the dictionary it'd be great so larson sorry you've been talking over you there you have anything to add in on that well, just, I, ics does that stand for iceland copenhagen stockholm <laughs> <laughs> what, what does it stand for does anybody know no. Intense no. collaborative shit, or I, I don't know. Collaborative. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like a kid in a candy store. You guys, this this episode, the, the music, it, it's like being opened into a brand new world. It's like you guys showing me like this new store, and like look, look at look at all this stuff you're missing. And now, now I, if Bork, when Bork Nagar comes into town, I would go see him. Dude, they were supposed to do their first ever American tour when COVID hit. Oh Fucking my God. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're, that's right. Patrick, yep. I wrote down. They were, play, they were playing Portland too. I'm like, the tickets weren't on sale yet, but yes, they're playing Portland. And that was like announced like in January 2020 or something. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I on my notes, I. But up north personally, that song that's un oh my god, dude. <laughs> that song's killer. Killer. Your I eyes mean, just rolled back, back like elephants in there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just the whole album, you know, that's gonna be one. You, you know, I've I've been kind of, you know, kind of take it slowly. I'm like do I really like this album? And the answer is yes. It's it's amazing stuff. And you know, there, there's really not much more to say. I love the varied vocals. You know, I can now take the black metal, give it to me in doses. You know, not 100 percent of the time. Yeah, it's great stuff. Musicianship is phenomenal. Oh yeah, fantastic. Dude, you may like more of that middle era stuff too. It's got like proggy kind of things going on. Yeah. You know, when you get yeah. if you work your way back. Yeah, they're a unique yeah. band, man. Like they they fall under the category. Of somebody, what does you know Bork Nagar sound like? Uh like Bork Nagar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can. If you gave me a Bork Nagar album that was untitled, a new one within like. 20 seconds, I can say, like, is this Borknagar? Because they're, they're so unique in that way. Yeah. And which I also love that uh, when Oyston was asked about what Borknagar means, he just, he just made it up because it sounded Viking or cool or whatever. It's like, it's just a made up word. It doesn't even mean anything. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. You know, maybe they can tour with Nazareth, you know? <laughs> 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 You know, right. you know, Bork 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 Nagar can play True North in its entirety, and Nazareth can play Hair of the Dog in its entirety, and you can guess which band is playing what. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> right. You're up. All right. Uh, speaking of all black metal vocals all the time, sorry, Jason. When I, when I put this list together, I'm like, oh boy. Hopefully, Larson's not going to kill me, but um, I had, this fucking album is just so incredible. Uh, it, new, newish band from Finland, when their first album came out, <clears throat> it's a very fair comparison, but people would say, like, it sounds like if Moonstar only had five-minute songs, which is like, you know, I totally agreed with because it had that epic heaviness feel, but without, like, the, the, the folky stuff that Moonstar has. And they kind of got painted into that corner, and maybe I, I'm just guessing that they kind of maybe heard that and took that personally. So their second album was a little less like it, 
And this third album is even more or less like that. <clears throat> it still has some influences for sure, some similarities. But holy shit, did they step up the songwriting on this album? It took them a, like the first two albums came out like in two years, and this one took like three years to come out because the, the main guy Stefan really really pushed himself to come up with something special. And dear God, did he? This is a uh, Finnish band Habu Krunu, which is also just such a cool cover. Just, and also this, this episode reminded me of, I had this shirt somewhere, and when Castro was ironing my shirts last week, I couldn't find it, so I don't know where my shirt of this went. He might be in Castro's trunk. <laughs> Castro's <laughs> oh, shirt. Like he's he's a extra large, I'm a medium. So <laughs> anyway, Habu Krunu, uh, I got it, sorry. I have to pronounce Finnish. Oh, I don't want to do this. Unios soy man sota. Whatever. The, the third Habit Kuno album. I mean, just from the first minute, I knew this was gonna be a special album with that that just that uh, vocal choir that opens it up. Um it just keeps song by song, the goddamn good lead guitar work in it, and then those choirs come back in and out throughout the whole album. It's angry, it's pissed off, but it's just beautiful and melodic as shit i love that it's dedicated to the winds that doth blow in the north of every man's heart <laughs> <laughs> the first four songs are side war the second four songs are side hate um just a beautiful beautiful album like like i the, their second album was like my number four or five or somewhere pretty close um of that year that came out but this album was, is, is literally out like 9.99 out of 10 for me just incredibly heavy and emotional and and pagan and just lots of vitriol but also like with a lot of love and passion it's just in, absolutely incredible if you like paganish black metal you have to have to get this as soon as possible I was gonna say of the three you the three you picked, this was easily my favorite one. But it's also funny because I can get a couple minutes in at most on any album you pick, and I'm like, yeah, I can 100% figure out that you like this album. Yeah, but it's 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 also one that like I was expecting it to kind of go longer, but it didn't. It was like it flowed pretty quickly, and uh, that's so. I, I think, I think it's like. I think it's like 40 minutes, 42 minutes or something. You no, know, and I, I went back to this one of, of your three. I went back to this one easily the most. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It, 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 it's familiar. It sounds like stuff I've heard before, but it's also like such a fresh take on it. It feels new. Yeah, I, I loved it. Um, I've always heard the band name within the past couple of years. Everybody, you know, hyping them up and talking, you know, oh man, I think it was probably the last album that people were going just completely nuts over. And then this one came out and I, I mean, I slept on both of them. So it was good that you put it in your list, you know, because I, as soon as I checked it out, I was just like, what you said about Moon, uh, moon Sorrow, it's just like mm -hmm. Orton Moon, that's exactly what it reminded me of. Instead of like 15 minute tracks, it was like four or five minute tracks, like everything condensed, but a lot of like classic traditional metal riffs, like insane blazing solos, like classical, just, I loved it. And the yeah. sound is, the sound is tight. It's not, you know, it's, it doesn't sound lo-fi in any way. It's like got real crystal sound. Yeah. Yeah, this is this album definitely has more. Uh, this, the first two albums are just two guys: the guitarist, drummer, or guitarist, singer, bassist, and a drummer. This one he actually brought in a bass player and another guitarist, and I think this one has more guitar leads than the previous ones because those solos are fucking sick. Mm -hmm. God. <clears throat> what you yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I, do. I listened to this three times. Wow. Yeah, and I think this one's the eye opener. This one's the candy store opener for me. This album's phenomenal. The musicianship is—it's unbelievable. I put uh, 
I put Havakrunu in my notes. Uh, this is the third of three albums. I put rad album cover. That album cover is ridiculous. Yeah. Badass. Jason, That's can I cut you off for one minute, Jason? Jason? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I made sure to write in my notes so I could get it in before you, but 102,000 YouTube views in the last <laughs> 10 months. So do the math. What is that? <laughs> That's, that's 10,200 a month. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's fucking insane. That's that's a festival amount of people right there. <laughs> well, I put I put track one killer neoclassical guitar solo. I, is this Tony McAlpine? <laughs> Am I listening to that? The end of track one, clean vocals. Track four at 4.15, I wrote down Killer Riff. The, the solos are ripping. I'm enjoying the clean part. I hear power metal. I hear thrash metal. When this band gets into their mid-tempo, not the blast beats, when it goes mid-tempo, I swear to God I'm hearing a top-tier thrash band. Freaking awesome. And then I put the last song is Tear Light. So it's like I hear Viking metal in this. I hear power metal. I hear thrash. I hear I hear it all, and I hear black metal. Yeah. I'm, gonna, this, I'm gonna have to listen to that again for that thrash influence, like you said. There's just very varied in the music and the writing. Yeah, this album's badass. And if it Good. wasn't 149 dollars, I would buy it. <laughs> the CD is 149 dollars. Where I think it would be like a limited version. But. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I can't find it on uh, Amazon. I can't find it on uh, eBay. eBay, I think it's about it's over hundred bucks. And wow. Discogs, I think it was near a hundred bucks. So you try the metal yeah. detector? I've not tried the metal detector. Try that. I think they go with like two hundred distros now. Around that. So yeah, this. It's probably your <laughs> metal detector to see if they have it. No, excellent stuff, man. Yeah, great. You guys liked it. Blown away. I mean, I, I have exquisite taste, so I expected you to like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go with my first uh, first choice. Oh, when I wrote this, I think it was maybe Pat in a text that he was surprised that I, I put this on my list. Um, I love Dream Theater. Big Dream Theater fan, but up to a certain point. I like Dream Theater with Kevin Moore. I like Dream Theater with Derek Sherinian. I hate Dream Theater with Jordan Rudess on. I can't stand them. I think that band is... James Labrie sucks. I can't. This is just the keyboard shit Jordan does. Yeah, carnival keys and like a circus keyboard thing. And it just, it ruins it. And always wanted, I, I, Mike Portnoy is a great drummer. I love a lot of the side project. Well, I can't say a lot. Some of them are crap. But um, the winery dogs that he did with Richie Kotzen and Billy Sheehan is just straightforward and it's just awesome you know and this came out in the lineup instantly billy sheehan on bass portnoy on drums sherinian on keys uh bumblefoot on the guitar who ron thaw bumblefoot phenomenal completely underrated insane player and then jeff scott soto on vocals and that was Sons of Apollo, this is 2017, Psychotic Symphony. And it was the best Dream Theater album since Awake, in my opinion. Um, every song is just rips. It's killer, prog metal. Derek Sherinian's awesome. He's like Kevin Moore, but a little more technical. Kevin Moore... His key, he wasn't super technical, but he added atmosphere to Dream Theater. Jordan Rudess sucked the atmosphere out of it. Like, no atmosphere anymore. It's just like real 
rigid. I don't know. I can't stand them. And so I, I love that Serenians, you know, Portnoy is back to like, he's one of the greatest drummers of our generation. What can you say about Billy Sheehan? The guy's an absolute freakish leader. You know, and I like to think about Jeff Scott Soto because he's not over the top. And he's in his 50s, I believe, but he still has a good voice, unlike James LeBrie, who I don't know. James LeBrie has some kind of disease. The older he gets, his fucking head gets bigger. It's huge, dude. It's huge. It's like an orange on a toothpick. And a dude can't sing, and he looks like an idiot. I can't stand it. Have you ever seen these cameo videos going out with him? No. People were posting. I got to send you some of them. Where he sings a cappella. Dude, it's like it's like fucking somebody just like stepped on a cat's nuts or something. It's it sounds like to me like when he sings like he, maybe because it is he is so bloated, but it's almost like the back of his tongue is so fat he can't enunciate. It's like <laughs> when he sings, yeah, dude. It, and so Jeff Scott Soto, it's it's just he's a great vocalist. Um, the album after this is great. Excellent. They did this uh, live. I think it live at, I don't know how you say it, Plob Div or, Plob, or something like that. It was a live album that came out. Awesome. Totally awesome. They do some old Dream Theater tracks. It just rips, man. This is just, this to me is like, it's got hard rock hooks to it from Sheehan and Soto, but then it has all the prog. So it's like Dream Theater. I know this is going to sound weird, but to me, it's like Dream Theater mixed with kind of mom scheme, heart, like just the real straightforward stuff, and then some Mr. Big stuff put in there, um, coming from Sheehan. So I can't, I, I honestly, can't. I mean, the first track is over 11 minutes long. So it just kind of gets you primed for that like old school dream theater prog. But it's uh, absolutely phenomenal. And I can't wait for the new one. I know they've been talking about it now that kind of COVID's, you know, on its way out. Hopefully, knock on wood. Um, they've been talking about doing another one. It's supposed to be another Sons of Apollo, another Winery Dogs. Um, so I'm, I don't know. I'm stoked. I absolutely love it. I would have chosen the new one, but I was like, you know what? Let's just go with the first. So that's my first pick. Your song. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, first off, I hate supergroups. I fucking hate them. Like, generally, they come out with just, it's like, it's, it's just a bunch of stealth. You know, gloating, look how great I am, kind of shit. And this fell into a little of that for me. Um, I, I actually, my favorite Dream Theater album is uh, Scenes from a Memory, Metropolis Part Two. So I, I do think Dream Theater really fell off a little bit after that. But I, I do love that mid era of Dream Theater. The, 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 obviously, these people can fucking play. But I, what I felt when I was listening to it. And I could see why people like it, but I, I felt like, it, to me, it felt paint by numbers prog metal. Just like I kind of knew where the songs were going before they went there. Um, but I mean, I, I, anytime those people are playing together, I could sit there and listen to the musicianship, especially porno. I could spend the whole album just listening to him freaking rip the shit out of that stuff. I mean, it, I, I don't, I don't not like it. It's just like it just felt like kind of like I just been there, done that, like. I've kind of heard this style before. And not that it's, you know, obviously I probably listen to plenty of other shit like that, but prog metal, that proggy of metal is not my forte. And I do like some, but I mean, it wasn't not a unenjoyable listen. But I just like, I just, I don't know. I feel like they just kind of were in their comfort zone. Like if they did something like a little bit unexpected, I think would have been, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. It was a tough listen for me, but. I'm trying to get more like Jason to open my mind a little bit more. But with this, I feel like I'm the kid in the candy store and they don't have any fucking Mr. Good bars for me. <laughs> I just, I haven't reached there with pro like this kind of, like I was never a dream theater fan. I got that first album 
whatever, 88, 89, when it came when out. Dream, I thought it was when when Dream, Dream and Day, Day and Night. Yeah. And even that one, I was kind of like, yeah, it's all right, but it was nothing. And then after that, I, you know, as new albums came out, I maybe checked out a little bit and I never, I could never get into Dream Theater. So this one for me was kind of like, you know, looking at who was in it and listening to it. It was like one of those for me where um, the sum was not greater than all the parts. It was like all the parts were greater than the sum, but it didn't, it didn't blend for me. And I didn't, you know, I love, I, I like uh, Soto. I think he's a great vocalist. She and, you know, of course, love him. Um, it just, it's, I just, it's, it's just a style that I cannot, get into yet you know and i i try and i mean those all those years of going to prog power saw tons of different bands that would you know kind of fit into this realm and i just there's something about it that doesn't you know grab me you know no, totally not. respect it totally respect those guys I mean, kip feels like jason after the haunt review last episode <laughs> that, was my, that, was, that was my uh payback for the pleasure elite you know Mushroom head. Mushroom head. <laughs> now you know what and this really isn't my thing really isn't prog not even so that's simple. why it surprised me when i saw it on your list i'd never checked it out and i was like holy shit she's picking this you know like yeah because i that's not it's not not even 70s prog man like i fucking hate genesis i can't do it like a lot of that i fucking hate king crimson i hate robert yeah, I I just, yeah, I, 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 go ahead, Jason. Well, King Crimson, I've been listening to a lot of that. I actually had a kid in third period that's a huge King Crimson fan. And he's like, Mr. Larson, play uh, cat food. I guess it, cat food. I just played it for him last week before class started and I'm listening to it. And I'm like, it just, it's, it's a cacophony. It's so weird. Yeah, I'm not. In, I'm totally not into King Crimson at all. And I think Bill Bruford was in King Crimson, right? And I love Yes. I love Yes. I mean, those guys, they're, they're prog gods. And you just I got just, banned from that Facebook group about the 70s classic bands there, Jason. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this, you know, this is a good album. But and I would listen to it, but I'm I'm not going to go out and buy it. Mm -hmm. But it's good stuff. This surprises but, me because this is something that to me, like ten years ago, I know it wasn't out oh, then. Totally. You would have been ten like, I'm ago. into this. This is great. Yeah, you believe right that? up my alley. You know, 15 years ago, I loved Rap City too, but I haven't grabbed a Rap City album. I haven't listened to Power of the Dragon Flame in years. <laughs> I'll be, I mean, I, honestly, I figured out of any of them, I, I honestly figured this would be one that at least Jason would say, yeah, yeah, like this was totally. Or I, he'd say, he'd say it's in my collection. Of course, yeah. I own it. No, you know, I was. Yeah. And I think it's because yeah. I don't listen to Prague. So I like, I, I like what you said, Pat, that it's like the sum of all the parts or whatever, you know, yeah. everybody that was in it. I'm such a huge fan of everyone. I don't mind power groups as long as it's good. If they put out a good album, I'm fine with that. If they put out an album that's pure shit, I don't want anything to do with it, you know, because then it's like, it's just a mess. And it seems like, to me, I think the, the term super group gets almost overused at this point because a lot of these guys are doing so many different projects with each other, you know, that it's like, it's almost like they're just having fun and they're just doing shit with each other. You know, yeah. Richie Cotson's doing this, or uh, uh, Winery Dogs with Billy Sheehan. Billy Sheehan's doing this. Richie Cotson, who's not in some sort of but he's also yeah. on that new album with uh, Adrian Smith from uh, Iron Maiden, which I think is fucking phenomenal. But it's just, so to me, I take it, I take it. these guys just having fun, but I love it. I, I love the band. This is my haunt and my pleasure elite for you guys. <laughs> I'm going to give it another listen. So I am going to give it another listen, but it's hard. I can't, it's hard for me to get to an album where I can't listen to it in one sitting. And that, that one makes me like one, maybe part way into a second song. I'm like, I got to don't go on to something else right now. Cause it just like, 
I just need something dirty. <laughs> All right, so strike one for me. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Well, I got a strike two for you coming up. Oh, I, yeah. I know what you want. All you, Jason. You're next. All right. Well, right, riding on the prog metal uh, uh, bandwagon, uh, my number two uh, in the last five years, um, these guys, as far as prog metal goes, this is um, a, uh, how do I put it? Uh, uh, part of the band family that I completely worship. Everybody, you know, in the metal world puts either Queens Reich at the top or Dream Theater at the top as far as the prog metal kings. And for me, there's no question that the greatest prog metal band I've ever heard in my life, and it isn't even close, and they never got the attention that they deserve. It's Haunt. Was- Haunt. <laughs> this is the band that should be uh, the headliner after Dream Theater and Queen's Right come on. And I did see the band on a Dream Theater Queen Wright co-headlining tour, which was about 15 years ago, and the opener was Fate's Warning. And to me, Fate's Warning is the king. I don't care who the vocalist is. It could be John Arch, it could be Ray Alder, I don't care. Jim Matheos is the fog guitarist king. There's a strike for you right there. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so John Arch um, does three albums with Fate's Warning and decides to go away from the industry and comes back. And he came back and uh, helped me with the ear pat with Twist of Fate. He put out a little. God, that thing fucking ruled. I don't know the year, like 12, 2012, what, something? I I, I don't know. 2010, I don't know. A little two song EP. 25 any- fucking minutes long, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes, um, that was comes 2003. back. 2003. That long ago? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're only back by nine years. <laughs> I guess. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> And in 2013, he collaborates with Jim Matheos uh, and puts out an album called Sympathetic Resonance. And that would have been on my list, but it was 2013. And you doing the math, being the math whiz you are, you realize that was eight fucking years ago. (laughs) So I couldn't put it on my list here. Because I would like to see 13 for God damn it. Damn it. <laughs> so I picked uh, the second album in uh, 2019 and uh, got uh, John Arch and Jim Matheos called Arch Matheos with Winter Ethereal. And this is my number two album since uh, 2016. Dude, I freaking I love this album. I'm, I'm probably gonna purchase this one. And it's I know we've been on. I know we've the, the the singer's Arch, correct? Yeah, John, John Arch. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know Fate's Warning well enough. I've heard those names a lot. First off, I thought Matheos was um, I thought it was like a collaboration with the singer from Angra who just passed away. Like, oh. he was very. Matos? Matos. Matos. Yeah, I, 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 Arch Matthias, Andre. I always, can, I, for some reason, I thought that he was involved. But anyway, uh, speak. We, we've been talking a lot about Dream Theater, and when I heard this, I'm like, okay, if this guy sang for Dream Theater instead of Labrie, Jesus Christ, that would have bumped them up. But <laughs> I mean, because yeah, this vocalist freaking ruled, and I loved the progressive tendencies without being just bloated. I mean, yes, the album is an hour and 11 minutes, I think. So, yeah, it could have been pared down. The production was great. The freaking drummer was so in the pocket and doing really 
the messy fills, not not bloviating, not jerking off, but I mean, classy prog, really really great hooks, and that and the singer just freaking like he's old as shit too, right? He's got to be fifty. Oh, he's older. Older. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how old he is because I know Fate's Warren's been out for a long minute, but man, God, he still sounds like he's in his thirties. Holy smokes! And the way he can hit his upper, the way he can hit his upper register without um, going into falsetto, his range is just incredible. Because like a lot of singers would have to go into falsetto when they start hitting those notes, but he's still in his uh, chest or his head voice without going into falsetto. It's freaking phenomenal. Like I, I, I'm probably gonna, you know. I'm not gonna go buy it tomorrow if I see it at a store to use or something. I'm definitely gonna pick that up. Yeah, I, I you should check out the first one, not not the first Fates. I'm saying the first Arch Matheos. Because to me, I think that one's a little stronger of an album, but they're both good. Yeah. I mean, this, uh, what song did I write down? Because this is the one that I think you said you wanted us to listen to. Right? Yeah. Out of yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So yes. straight and narrow that track with that drum intro. Um, the whole album was really good. It reminded me of like really early '90s metal blade, proggy, like obviously face warning type stuff. But there were other bands that I listened to from that era that was on that label that kind of had that same sound it was prog but it was like it had a hook to it it was straightforward i don't know there's there's other bands on metal blade at that time and i was trying i was having a hard time of like trying to figure out who they were but it just reminded me took me back to that era and i loved it yeah john arch is 62 years old and so he recorded that when he was like 59. Yeah, no, we, like we, Jason, Incredible. checked that prog power when they did the Fates Warning reunion with, he still has his voice live too. It's like, he sounds like, to me, he sounds like he did back on the Spectre within yeah, yeah. Wake of the Guardian. I mean, he's still, that 2003 album, which I thought was 2012, <laughs> It, that's when he came back with that because he had gone away and he was like a painter or some other shit i don't remember what and when that album came out and i heard it i was like holy shit he still fuck john arch still completely sounds like john arch the way he phrases things everything his lyrics the way they flow and how he shoots a bunch of he's kind of like greg graffin from bad religion where he'll throw more syllables than possible into a you know a line he has and, his own vocal. Yeah, it just it's like I, he's one of my all time favorite vocalists. So, yeah. regardless of the music, I would just, I would buy it just for him alone and I'd be happy. Mm. No, it was awesome, man. I, it's another one, Jason, two for two, because I wrote that one down to buy two yeah. on my list because I was like, I, I actually have that one down. And I have the one before this written down, and I'll I'll probably write down if you guys say that John RTP, that Twist of Fate was good. I'll I'll write oh, that. Oh God, two songs. First song is called Relentless, and that is like classic John Arch. You hear that? The second song is called Cheyenne. It's good, but I think Relentless is like spectacular of those two tracks on that album. Yeah, and these dudes like Fate's Warning and Jim Matheos and very i know they get a lot of love i think they're it pisses me off because i listened to the last fates warning album and i love it and yet everybody still makes a big deal about dream theater and it's like no like fate warning is still good you know even though that was their last one um, do you know if he's going to be doing any more with John Arch, or is this it, or is he done? For the period. I that I don't know. They're they're uh, very. I hope, they're I hope very, so. They're just very quiet guys. Yeah. You know they yeah. they're almost like they're like Rush. They just do their thing. You're not going to hear about them. They're very quiet, reserved people. 
Mm -hmm. And and I hope I hope another one is in there because dude, that voice is just. I've been I've been scouring the internet for John Arch beating off videos, and I can't <laughs> you know I just it's too reserved for me. <laughs> Are you 16, Patrick? Are you 16 or 17? <laughs> uh, wasn't he on that album, The Spankter Within? Am I going to make it through this episode? <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, Excellent right. choice, dude. Great, great transition to Patrick. So good. <laughs> is it on to me oh you yeah. all right um this one was another one that this one actually popped into my mind right away when the topic came up and uh they'd had like hadn't had an album out in 15 years they were kind of had been on hiatus they still played random live shows um but and you know, released a single, you know, a handful of years before it. Didn't really know how active they were other than touring periodically. And uh, this album obviously came out on 420, uh, 2018. And it was a surprise album. It just on, on April 20th. Yeah, they, 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 just, they released it, right? But they released no, it and said, Oh, no. a new album out today. And yeah. that is uh, Sleep the sciences um i'd seen the band once or twice prior to this album coming out and when this came out or dropped as fields would say um don't say that please <laughs> I, you know i streamed it that day and then went out and found where i could order it from so i ordered the disc ordered vinyl um ordered a couple shirts which i was gonna pull out and show here but they're over here i don't give a shit Got the fucking snow globe, the sleep <laughs> snow globe. My kids got it for Christmas. Um, That's all That's I can, great. you know, this track, this album, like not a not a bad track on it. Um, well, there's only five tracks. Or, huh? There's only like five tracks. So. Uh, there's six, but one is just like a lot of, you know, uh, long water, you know, and one's just a slow kind of closing. Yeah. Extra, you'd say, outro, I should say. Um, Sonic Titan, they've been playing live, you know, for a few years before it. So that track was kind of known. But um, this kind of hits everything that I like about, I don't know, what you'd call it, Stoner, Doom, whatever, however it falls into. Um, I love everything about the band. I love, I love that they sing about weed. I don't smoke weed, but I love that kind of culture within them and then about space and i've always loved space i own a fucking telescope was out looking at the moon the other night so just like this album checks all those boxes for me, musically thematically i mean you got a song called giza butler you know yeah you know? patrick i love that you said i don't know if you call them stoner rock and then you said anyway all the songs are about weed <laughs> Well, but you know, I mean, there's like all these nuances. Kip can probably get into more about what's desert, what's stoner, what's doom, what's American doom, what's traditional doom, you know. What's Romanian I mean, it's, doom? It's just, and, and for a band to me that has long songs, not counting Dope Smoker itself, you know, I just, they, they don't seem that long to me. And like when you see them live and they play, 10 minute song it's like it's over before you know it and they're on to the next song and you're it's like, because you're stoned when you're watching it you're like <laughs> yeah it's just that rip that those riffs just last forever but yeah, they go I mean, but they go, I, but they go I, by but they go by quickly at the same time yeah i mean i it's just, just so hypnotic you're just so entranced by it and then all of a sudden like oh. then, then they make a little change and you're like holy shit you know <laughs> Like, like both, I, I saw him twice on this tour, and uh, both times, both rooms were just like a big fucking hot box. You know, it was just like filled with smoke, and just like it was the tamest crowd ever. You know, it was just like a lot of slow banging heads with a couple feverish heads at a few points, and then 
it would mellow back out, you know, and then a bouncer would come kind of through with a flashlight and people would hide stuff and then, you know, it'd flare back up. And I, I, I seriously, like, Patrick, I, I got stoned listening to the album. Yeah, that's you, what I was, I was that. just going to say that. <laughs> you stole it. <laughs> like just... Like by the by the time by the time it went out, out of the intro into the first actual song, oh my god! Like I I, I would have gotten a DWI if I like, went on the road after that. It's fucking incredible! And I, I mean, we who was the who had the stoner album the last episode? We were talking about the fuzz guitar. Oh, uh, Roach Powder. Yeah, ro yeah. So th this just again that tone on the guitar and Mike my, my, Matt Pike Mike Pike with Matt. Matt. I mean, I, I, I've never heard Sleep until this. High and Fire, I've seen live, never really listened to. And I know, like, his legend and everything. And uh, I, put, I put, so this is my first Sleep experience. But holy shit, man, like, I would love, to, I, it's probably nothing I'm going to own myself. But, like, if it's on at a party, oh, my God, I'm just going to be, like, just getting into that shit. Like, my buddies who do smoke weed and we'll play like Settlers of Catan together. That could just be on in the background for like five hours while we're playing Catan. It's just the most chill, rad, just puts you right in a trance music I've heard in quite some time. It's freaking phenomenal. You may dig uh, the bass player, singer, his other band, Ohm. Because that's more, that's way, that's even more hypnotic. It's not as it's not as heavy, but it's still heavy in its yeah. own way. And it's the no guitar rhythmically player. just like, it's just trance like, you know, it. Yeah. I think it's just bought bass and drums in ohm. There's no guitar, player. but yeah, it works. It, yeah. it doesn't sound weird. It literally works. L Larson's down there trying to write a new joke real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got, I got my, I got my notes here, and I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I wrote down Oakland must have the best weed on the planet. <laughs> that's where they're from. I said this band has written three songs in a twenty-six year span. They wrote three songs. <laughs> uh, and and what have you been Nick, smoking? Nick, yeah, exactly. Albums? Nick, Nick, Nick stole my other uh, comments. I said, this is probably not good cruising music. And oh, it I'm is. Getting, I'm, I'm getting stoned just listening to Antarctic and Thawed. Because I <laughs> you know, you just click on the YouTube link. And, you know, I mean, you guys are looking at my face when I'm watching the YouTube video. And like five minutes in, I'm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I I actually wish I smoked weed so I could just listen to this high. Yeah, just imagine just being like, oh yeah. Because you know, you know, I don't I don't smoke weed either. I've never smoked in my entire life. I've never even smoked cigarettes. You know how uh, you know how like everyone here has seen Maiden live, correct? Obviously, I know. Obviously. Yeah. And you know how when Doctor Doctor goes on. And the crowd goes nuts for Dr. Doctor now. You know, it's like, you know, that music starts, everyone starts cheering and the crowd starts getting riled up. Sleep, every time I've seen them, they start with like 15, 20, 25 minutes. And all it is piped over the PA with the lights out is fucking the Apollo 11 moon landing. So it's oh, mission control God. talking to that. And the crowd starts to rumble, just like that. Not as loud as Maiden, of course, but it's like they start to rumble. The smoke gets heavier. And you hear it and you know as they're getting closer to landing on the moon you know when you hear those transmissions that you've heard from like history class way back when you know they're about to fucking come out and then matt pike kind of lumbers out with no shirt on his little beer belly hanging over his gap tooth and you know and then they just fucking go into it and it's like to me it's it's a band you gotta see live because I to me, to. I just I get goosebumps thinking about it. Just thinking, bro are they broken up now? They're like on hiatus, but they've announced that that doesn't mean they're broken up. They just you know, you know, they got high on fire, ohm, other shit, and then COVID happened too. Because ohm was one of the last bands I saw before COVID 
happen in, uh, in the U.S. And I think they're just kind of focusing their energies, you know, in their other. Because the, drummer, the drummers also, the drummers in neuro, neurosis. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, they're they've got shit going on. They're they're oh one God. of your super groups Nick, that just can't be tolerated. <laughs> I got uh, a couple things first. After you put this on your list, Pat, I found a sticker that I'm going to send you. It's out, it says Al Cisneros is my spirit animal. <laughs> so I'm gonna, and I can't remember. I ordered some, some like from some random. I don't know. I can't remember what distro it was from, but they sent it to me, and I was. Oh. It had nothing to do with like what you ordered or anything. I just pulled it out, and I was like. The fuck is this? All right, that's cool. Um, I mean, sleep is like, you know, they're on. To me, they're on the Mount Rushmore of, uh, you know, stoner U.S. You know, American stoner up there. To me, it's like sleep, sleep. magnet, Fu Manchu. Um, this is, it, it's it's no better or worse than anything else they've ever put out. It's, the quality is just as good. Is everything else they've ever done. Um, they, volume one, that's my least favorite out of everything they've done. But um, I mean, this is, it, it's a killer album. I never, it never felt like they were back 100%. Like they were just doing this, you know, kind of get together again and do an album, go do other shit. And then whenever we want, just come back and do another album again. Matt Pike is, honestly, he's like, an American, enemy. the guy just is like a riff machine. Um, High on Fire is legendary. You know, I mean, I've always loved them. And Pike is a character. And doesn't he have part of his foot cut off too? Yeah, he had like some toes because he's got diabetes too. He's going the Grimmett route, but he's not offering up the nub just yet. He still wears <laughs> boots and walks out and plays, you know. <laughs> hey man, this is uh yeah i know earlier you said you know is stoner or doom i this is just straight stoner and i'm i'm with you with see i'm i'm in i love this stuff you know i back in high school i used to smoke here and there and we would always you know sabbath and stuff like that but it's when I listen to sleep, it, it just kind of brings back that flow. Just like everything that we did and it reminds me of that early 90s kind of feel like when Holy Mountain came out. And I'm also really, I love the era of Stoner when everything was about space because I love space. Um, probably a little different than, I don't know about you, Tab, but I'm like a huge ufo fanatic band and flying saucers i'm a massive like anything space ufos and anything like that so listening to this album got my headphones on I'm on the internet just like reading up like conspiracy ufo shit area 51 and it's it's like it takes you into a completely different dimension it's a great band i mean it's they're legendary I'm glad they did this and just kind of went away and then they're going to come back whenever the hell they feel like it. I do like, I mean, I thought it was cool how it just came out and no one really knew it was coming to, yeah. like, it was like, it was, that's like a, there's no anticipation or anything. It's just all of a sudden this instant, it's like, you know, you don't get many of those things in your life where it's just a random surprise. That's like a good fucking surprise. And this was one of those, one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Kip, I know you're into outer space and black holes, but I know you're in inner space because you like my brown hole. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, speaking of speaking that, of black holes, you're up next. <laughs> <laughs> second album here uh band that only has one album i this is my second runner-up from 2019 
I, I, I'm not sure how I found it because Pat, you texted like, "How are you finding some shit?" And I, I am part of this Facebook group. It's called the Folk Metal Grove, and part of it's awesome because they they will post like new albums that are coming out, and then a lot of it's more they're, you know, they're like, "Hey, what do you think about the new Ale Storm?" And it's like, that, oh, "This band sucks." Like, you don't come in this group and talk shit about folk metal. We're in a folk metal group. I'm like, I get to say my goddamn opinion. I'm not rowing the boat on the goddamn floor. Anyway, like, I, I, ignore, I ignore 80% of their posts because they're, like, talking about uh, pirate metal and all the other bullshit. But every once in a while, there's some people that will post some great stuff. And I'm pretty sure that I found this. They're from Spain, but they're actually from the region of uh, Galicia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Which, if you guys don't know, it's the little northwest corner above Portugal. It's still Spain. And they have their own dialect up there. And, you know, they, they all speak Spanish, but they actually all speak Galatian or Galician. But again, not sure how you roll with that. But uh, so, it, and I did some research a little bit on it, about them. And uh, like, they were very influenced by the Celts, which is when I put this on, I'm like, it sounds very Celtic to me, but they're from, from Spain. And I, they were settled for a while, a long ass while ago by the Celts. And they actually, like, they have a, like, Bagpipes are very common in this part of Spain. Uh, the band is Mileth, M-I-L-E-T-H. Again, here's another guy I have Alma to pronounce. Bear with me. Catro Pregarius do Albor de lo Muerta. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Just an incredible album. I, I, I actually wanted to throw this in there because I thought Lars would finally get something he could like. Because it does... As Celtic as it is, it also to me has Orphan Land's uh, similarities. It does sound sort of Middle Eastern at parts with like with the the female uh, throat singing. Uh, very it has a, plenty of black metal as well. There's folk instruments. It's not prancy. We're not again. We're not rowing boats. <laughs> we're uh, you you guys might, but it's uh, it's it's just I don't know. I, I don't really know how to sum summarize this because at parts it's like almost annoyingly black metalish with the vocals and straightforward. And then it gets into like, just like almost Arcona with like the really traditional female folk singing, even though the, the main, the, the harsh vocalist is a male. Um, I don't know. It's like, I, I'm a big folk metal fan, obviously. And it's not, it, it, it scratches all the right itches while also being fresh and like Maybe because Galicia is a part of the world I don't know anything about and their music and their culture. But when I heard it, it's like, okay, this is definitely folk metal, but it's not run-of-the-mill folk metal to me. And it came in my number two back in 2019. Almost made my number one. But uh, it's just it's it's just a it's just a great listen. And it's not an hour and eleven minutes. I loved it, man. I, I did too. Great music. Enjoyed it. The 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 variation of the vocals again. I'm starting to appreciate this stuff more. And I think Alicia is a video game, Nick. So I think you were all wrong about your. Uh, That's Galaga. Your research. <laughs> That's Galaga, dude. <laughs> now the the second song, "De De Bruma y Saltere." If you look that up, that you should watch the video. It's hilarious. Just like I did. I did. did you watch I, that I, video? I, the I guy, did, was, uh, people covered in. There's people covered in pigeon shit, and like, the one guy is doing the black metal vocals, and the two guys are behind him, not saying anything, just standing behind him. Like, yeah, it looks like covered in pigeon shit because there's white, white and gray fa uh, paint, face paint all over them. <laughs> I, I, I did write down. I enjoyed track two the most, and I'm no way I'm going to butcher the names of the titles of the songs. Oh, you so. mean De Bruma e Saltara? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I will have some Alfredo with that, please. Thank you. <laughs> I wrote this down to to pick up because, yeah, it. I got a big Middle Eastern feel to it. Was all over the place with it was yeah. the different folkish elements that were in it, and uh, I mean, I loved it honestly. So. I listened to it probably a couple times. Um, I'll be honest with you, as much as I love the Habakunu, I, for some, there's something about this that I like just a little more. And it's probably because I love that 
that band, whatever, Melakesh or Mel whatever. I like that Middle Eastern feel to it. So this, which is weird to me because they're from Spain. Yeah. It's like Middle Eastern. But 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 also like there's a very Celtic feel too. It's like it's it's throwing me off. I kept going, where the fuck are these people from? And I would look and like Spain. All right. <laughs> Again. No, it was really cool. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah. It. It was like I mean, the, not, if I could change anything, the black metal vocalist kind of isn't the best. It's kind of there. If they could get a different guy to do the harsh vocals, I think it would take it to a whole new level. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it's just like, like that's why I love it so much. Cause it's This is Spanish, celtic Middle Eastern, black metal, black folk metal. And so it just... I even bought a shirt from them and they gave me a note saying, thank you from, you know, thank you for supporting Galatian folk metal, Nick. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> it was a, like, I enjoyed parts of it and I enjoy Orphan Land a lot, but it was like, I had to take it in small doses. It, like, it would kind of overwhelm me a little bit with, just the melody and everything and i like i said i like i like melakesh i like orphan land but it's it's one i need to give a little more time with because when i would go through it in pieces i just couldn't flow with it but i didn't think it was bad by any means i enjoyed like i said when i would listen to pieces of it but i couldn't get all the way in yeah it was no sons of apollo i mean it wasn't that bad no, no I, I enjoyed it more than sons of apollo <laughs> or or haunt uh great well i guess i can move on uh this one i know i'm gonna a thumbs up from this so 2019 Oh, Jesus. I say this sort of. The only reason I know that is because Sean Astin from Goonies and Lord of the Rings, Samwise Gamgee, he put a video out. I think I sent this to you, Nick, where he's talking about this. Did you? I don't remember that. Yeah, where he's like, hey, everybody, uh, you know, my friend told me to listen to this band, the Scottish band. I think it's called Sores. Sort or whatever. That's how he yeah. said it, and I was like, "Oh, because I always, I was like, how do you say that? It's like say or sort, whatever." Yeah, say or, but sort, sort, yeah. And uh, this to me is, I mean, it's it's one dude, um, just everything about this band, every album. This is the 2019 album. It's just absolutely amazing. Their newest album. Yeah, tw- Forgotten Paths, that track, that like, kind of in the middle or towards the end. The uh, violin going, dude, it just, it flows. It's so good. It literally, it, if sleep takes me like, to the fucking crab nebula and while I'm smoking a fucking water bottle. <laughs> this takes me like into the Scottish Highland. You know what I mean? I'm like, the, the, the one thing about it, I was listening to it one day. My wife is obsessed with that Outlander series, which I think is re- it's a really well done series. Okay. I don't read romance novels and any of that shit, but it's, re- but I was li- listening I, and she was like, this is like the heavy metal version of Outlander. And I said, yeah, pretty much, because it's just Scottish. But uh, it's amazing, man. Everything they put out. And what did they start out? The band was like Arsade. I don't know how to pronounce it, but they just changed their... It was, so they, the first album is... You could find two versions of it with that first name and the and the second name, but it's the same album, but just different band logo. Here it is. I, I have but and, and Andy Marshall... Everything he's been involved with, Askeval, yeah. So that's the yeah. That's the that's the same album, uh, Aura, or Roots. Roots. This is Roots. 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 Yeah. So you can buy that as either Sore or or that one. But Askeval and the, his his black metal project Fuath is also yeah. incredible. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. Like, Whatever. He's another one man band, although he does hire drummers. The guy from Panopticon, Austin Lund, did uh, the drumming on their second album, or maybe their third. I think it was their second album. So he gets in ringer drummers, but he, it's a one man project. But anything you can touch by Andy Marshall is quality. It, yeah, man. This guy is. I don't know. Any, like you said, anything he touches is fine. Like, a, a, you can find live shows on YouTube, and it's just. He, he has the violinists come out. I mean, it, everything about it's just awesome. Awesome. It's. Uh, definitely one of the the this is, this is my kind of style i don't it, to me it's just folk metal yeah there's some black metal stuff in there especially with the vocals and whatnot but um this yeah Italians, you should check out ask of all which is like his first kind of blackish folk metal band mm -hmm. eternity and then they, they just he loses one album and then he started sore after this okay it's also highly recommended, but I think what he's doing with Sword is just incredible. All, all four albums, they're all four songs, roughly 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah. And it, yeah, but it's more black metal with a touch of folk, for sure. Yeah. And that th the third song, I think it's called Bron or whatever on this, on that album, on Forgotten Paths, is yeah. just, it's, it, it almost brings me to tears how beautiful it is. Oh, man, that's the thing. It's like I, I listen to it and. I don't know, man. It makes me feel like it's like when I listen to certain Moon Sorrow tracks and I just like want to get on horseback and just go lopping people's heads off with a fucking sword. <laughs> and, like it just, I listen to this and it like, I just kind of get that. You get like the hair on your neck stands up and you're just like, so. Yeah. What say you? I dug it. And it was a band that I'd checked out probably some something from the earlier albums and never really got into it. And when I saw you picked it, I was happy because I was like, oh, this is going to make me go back and listen to them again. And I was totally caught off guard because whatever I'd heard before that didn't catch me, this one totally did. And I'll definitely go out and this is going to be on the to buy list for sure. Listen to it probably four or five times. And then I'll go back and slowly work my way back. Um, I want to say they came to Atlanta for a prog power even, because does he do some random shows here and there? I, I didn't see it. I, I know he did that. What's that concert in the festival of Wyoming, uh, Fire in the Mountain? My buddy Anthony went to that. My, my friend Greg went to it. He lives in Montana, and he got the show, show pictures like Soar's playing. I'm like, oh, god damn it. You got to see them? It was. I think it was all acoustic, too. It was like... No, it was, no, it was a regular show. Was it? Yeah, a no, this show? Was, was a different band that came to Atlanta, but... Yeah. But, yeah, definitely, this has got a lot of things that I like to it, so I'll definitely pick this up. Yeah, the, the Fire in the Mountain set was definitely metal, because he, he posted some pictures and stuff, and, yeah... The, it looked it was definitely a metal show i think it was in uh, jackson jackson wyoming is where that was that show i can't remember the name of it though it was like the little festival of is it a fire, fire on the mountain or something in the mountains yeah something like that which is so weird for a festival it's still a festival in wyoming and the, yeah. every i never heard of it and then I look at the lineup every year it's like oh my god this is incredible i need to get out there yeah, Nick, because that, that wasn't a that wasn't a festival that was a ritual no. <laughs> <laughs> what about you larson um i need to link it with the favorites from from kip's list and and you guys are uh, it's an album that i've listened to three times i listened to the havakunu the the Saur, and the, the Bork Nagar. I've listened to all of those three times. And I'm actually enjoying it after every listen. I put down Braun is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, and then I put almost like springtime black metal. It's like something to wake up to and say I'm ready for the day. It's like real positive. Kip wants to go like lop heads off and you just want to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. 
Uh, so, look at it. It's called Fire in. The, it's called Fire in the Mountains. It's in the Teton uh, Wilderness, of Wyoming. Yeah. And yeah. next year, uh, Enslaved plus Ivar Bjornsson's like side project is playing. Wow. Yep. Then you you can go to that show, and then you can go get your UFO fix over at Devil's Tower on the other side of the state. Road trip, gentlemen. Yeah. I've been there once. We'll podcast from the for the next year's Fire in the Mountains. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Speaking of uh, Jason, really quick, 2022, Fu Manchu put their uh, tour dates out, and there's a show, there's a show in okay. Mesa. There's a show in Mesa there, so uh, I've already I'm been on it. it. I'm thinking nice. about. It buying a ticket and let's let's do it let's do it totally i'd be down i'm all over it it'd be so great we'll go with your uh number three jason you're up next my number three um this album it, I, i've played the most times um uh, gosh in the last three years it's always in the car i had to bring it out of the car it was in the car today i brought it out just to uh, show it to you guys. And when this podcast is done, it goes right back in the car. Um, to, to me, this is my gateway band, I guess, to all of this, to what I've been doing. Um, I think the vocalist is phenomenal. Um, and I bought this album. This was the first album I bought from them. And then I, guess, I guess I really didn't fully appreciate the band until I bought their... Uh, effort before this album which i think was 2015 and uh, I, I i went to go buy a ticket for their live show in in 2018 in anaheim i went by myself um i just can't get enough of this band and i'm so glad that i finally discovered them when i should have discovered them years ago at cry power but for some reason it didn't click with me back then. It clicks with me now. And right now, I think this is probably the greatest metal band right now on the planet for me. And that's Amorphous with the Queen of Time. Yeah. I loved that. So I haven't heard any new Amorphous past probably 2005, I think. Is uh, two Tuanella or something around there? I you guys. No, that would have been uh, two thousand five. Would have been like Eclipse. Maybe Eclipse. Okay. The Eclipse and Silent Waters were yeah, kind of Eclipse. around that time. Okay, Silent Waters is probably the most yeah, recent one, have. and I kind of got out of them just because they weren't doing my thing. And holy shit, man! That, there were some really strong tracks. That that opening track, the B, is amazing. Yeah. Incredible. And then I really liked, I think, track four. Uh, God, let me look it up. What was it? Track four. Uh, Golden Elk. Golden Elk. That one really sent it home for me, for sure. I mean, I mean, I, I, I had a friend that was really into them. He was playing in the background. I'm like, this is really good. This is probably 10 years ago. And it, I'm definitely going to need to explore them more. I mean, totally enjoy it. Um. If I could, you know, I'm gonna be. This is my negative show. So if I could say anything I didn't like, <laughs> was that um, it seems like every song was in a harmonic minor key, which kind of bummed me out. Like, okay, we're enough of the harmonic minor, which is just a, a, a different way to play a minor scale. It kind of seemed a little one trick pony with that, but at the same time, that's totally okay. Like, I just it was very enjoyable. But it, it, besides the harmonic minor key too, like. <sighs> When some of those bands do like, okay, we're done with being a harsh band, like the the harsh chorus and the clean, sorry, the harsh verse and the clean chorus cycle gets a little old for me. Like, you know, start the song off with the harmonic minor scale going on and the keyboard, and then the verse is harsh and then the chorus is clean. It's a little stagnant for me, but even with that, it was still enjoyable enough for me to go. I'm definitely, I'm going to do your amorphous and do, I'm going to, I'm going to 
now that I've heard that, I'm going to go backwards and listen to some because the, the, the songwriting and the musicianship is still great enough. I know there's still like, I don't know Amorphous well enough to know like the breakdown of uh, this previous singer, Posse versus someone else. I, I see it talked about all the time. I don't know when that happens and I don't know who's on Silent Waters. But yeah, it's, it's the same, it's the same guy. This guy yeah. from Tell this me. new album back to Eclipse. Okay. This guy. Yeah. And I Tommy think I think they wanted when he was gonna be in the band, I thought I read somewhere that they wanted him to do just kind of clean vocals. And he said the only way I'll do it is if I can do hard heavy vocals too. Yeah. So they were like, okay. And I'm glad because he's got an awesome clean voice in his awesome. And honestly, I'm a poser as hell. Like I was like, oh man, yeah, clean of time. And I went to grab it and I, I never I have every single Amorphous album and I don't have this one. And I was like, holy shit, I totally forgot to get this. And it's it's on my list. I was like, well, I gotta get it. I got you know, all the other ones up here, and uh, every one of them is good, man. I like every it's weird, it's, it's weird for me because, like, I love Amorphous. I've loved him since I first got turned on to him, seen him a bunch of times. And this album, I know we talked about this in yeah. that other episode. I just, something I, I cannot get into this record. It kind of reminds me, I mean, of their last five or so records circle and the beginning of um times they're they're solid but they're just to me they're kind of there like they're not at their strength even of like this era because like i think eclipse and silent waters are amazing sky forgers not far behind then they kind of hit a lull with those couple albums and then under the red cloud came out i fucking thought that album ruled loved it saw him a couple times on that tour and then this came out and i was just kind of put off i was you know a lot of people loved it i remember this ranked really high on the brave board on their end of the year it had to have been in their top five for that year if not yeah, it was. Three. and it just i don't know i just i haven't been able to whatever it is on this album just it's not doing it for me but it's amorphous, so I'll always come back to it and give it another shot because I can listen to any of their other records, no problem. So, Jason, have you gotten to this yes. one yet? I have not gotten to that one yet. Have you Have you done Tales yet? No, I have not bought Tales so yet. Elegy, still... Is Elegy the last one you've kind of heard? Yeah, that's the one I need to buy next. And you, they, have now, a new, they have a new live album that just came out like this week. And then also, oh, really? yeah, they, it's it. I think it was this week they have a live album that yeah. came out, and then uh, the guitarist has a solo album that yeah. he's released like one, maybe two tracks from that's coming out, I think, in June. Yeah, isn't yeah, that kind think, of like folk? Yeah, it's uh, more, it's lighter, it's yeah, yeah. But now I got to teach summer school because I got to buy that Hobbit Karuna, so. <laughs> <laughs> So Jason, I, I just I just got my two Fu Man Chu shirts today that I whatever paid fifteen bucks a shirt and then thirty dollars a piece for shipping from Europe. Yeah. So they just arrived today. Oh my god! I don't get any overtime now or summer school. I got to figure out how yeah. to budget it in. Yeah, maybe you could sell your body to Nick. Yeah, I'm around. Those uh, Turbo Negro songs sell your body to the night. <laughs> yeah yeah so, so Jason, like, i love that shit and like to me that would be like again like if i find it used somewhere i'm gonna pick it up yeah. like, I, I totally enjoyed it very easy to listen to yeah loved it and ultimately i'm not knocking it because it's that band and i can't and it's i can't really fault it for anything specific it's just more of a personal thing that it's not giving me goosebumps like certain parts of other amorphous albums will do for me. Yeah. And I know it'll do that for you because you you got well, Jason, emotional attachments to it. You Jason, know? If I remember this, this was like the first album that got you into accepting harsh vocals, right? Yeah, I would say them. Well, I, maybe Orphanland before that. But yeah, these are the gateway bands. 
I would say, yeah, Orphan Land and uh, Amorphous. Yeah, and I did hear, uh, I did hear Mabul before the the Amorphous. Which but is yeah, crazy because you, because you've seen Amorphous and you don't remember it. And I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. a headlining set too, like an hour and thirty, <laughs> hour and forty-five minute set. Yeah. He was drunk. I wish. Up next, Pat, what's your third? This was kind of a shot in the dark for me. I labeled it like a wild card because I was really trying to figure out there were. A couple bands or a couple artists that I was thinking about picking, and then when I really thought about it, this album only came out last month. And my neighbor, who I always reference, his name is—he actually has a name. It's Ben. Um, one day I came home from work, and there was a CD in the mail with a note that said, "Hey, I thought you know you might dig this." So I pulled it out and I looked at it. I looked at the cover and I was like, oh, cool. This is going to be some kind of stonery, doomy <laughs> band or whatever based on that cover. And then I started streaming it. And the first song I was like, well, definitely not that, you know, and it, you know, it didn't really do anything for me the first song. But by the time the end of the second song hit, going into the third song, I was like holy shit this is great something about this is awesome um i listened to the album all the way through that night and then a second time on the first night i got it and it's amigo the devil born against had never well, it's, only, it. it's only 35 minutes right it's, yeah it's short it's like a haunt it's like a haunt album <laughs> yeah a haunt <laughs> album with a better vocalist <laughs> and uh and it, after I listened to it a couple times, I was like, I got to find out more about who this is. I just didn't do a lot of research on the guy. I mean, he's got an actual name other than Amigo the Devil. Don't even remember what it is. But after that, after probably a week or so of listening to this album, I ordered one of his other albums. And then this one I had to pay like 20 some bucks for uh, from uh, England. And uh, it's classified as like murder folk, whatever the fuck that is. I don't know. I mean, I watched a couple interviews with him or read a couple and it's kind of like, you know, some stuff he tries to tell from the point of like a serial killer and you'll see like some of his titles, you know, reference them, but uh, not metal, but apparently, you know, people in the metal community, you know, follow him, like him. Um, but it's actually an album that's been since I got it that midweek in April. It's been on this and the other two albums of his that I have have been heavily on my playlist. Uh, you know, I've read that he's been influenced by like Tom Waits. I'm not a Tom Waits fan, but I can kind of hear some of those uh, similarities or the influence there. Um, I don't know. I just don't really know where to classify it, but it's something about his lyrics and the way he delivers them and some of the variation on the songs with like Spanish guitars and things like that just, you know, captivated me. And now my wife's even playing like, Hey, play that amigo, the devil. Yeah. Uh, you know, Matt, I, I'm going to say, I want to thank you for this. It was, I've, I've seen the name, but Jesus Christ, that was an awesome. Listen, like I, I, I had no idea what I was getting into, but by the end of it, I was like goosebumps for sure. The last song about the prison letter or whatever, Jesus Christ, that was brutal. And very, very simple songs, but the, the, the lyricism, his wit with his words and his uh, cadence and his voice is just mind blowing. Like I prefer the songs that were more down tempo than like the quirky kind of more up. Not, not, none of the songs are upbeat, but the faster songs. You're talking like the murder in the bingo hall. Yeah, like okay, like okay, you're. I mean, it's very witty with the lyrics, but like yeah, the opening song and then the last song and the couple in between that were definitely more just him and a guitar. Man, like, I was just like, who the fuck is this guy? I need yeah, to. Explore. I, I looked up. I, I looked. 
you got to check out the from the, the album before this the first song on that album is called cocaine and abel and it is fucking awesome i mean if yeah. you like the more you know straightforward mellow songs and the lyrics are just fuck awesome yeah i mean that was great like i'm i'm I, I definitely am going to research him more because that was that was such a cool ride. I even I even went all in and I bought a fucking Amigo the Devil long sleeve and then a fucking a hoodie. I was like, you know, you have a few beers on a Friday night. It's like when you used to eBay to try to get shit and overpay <laughs> for it. I was like grilling, drinking, and then I was like, oh, he's got merch. Fuck, let me. Let me order some, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna explore the shit out of him. That sounded weird, but I'm gonna definitely dig into that guy. <laughs> that sounds weird too. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, take on it. It's here comes oh. the mushroom head. <laughs> no. <laughs> Funny that you mentioned Tom Waits because when I when I worked in a record store. A couple of the people there used to play Tom Waits, and I absolutely fucking despised it. It was the goofiest fucking like it was like something that Oompa Loompas would listen to if it was like oh I don't understand what the hell was going on. It was weird, but that was only like half the song on this album that it reminded me of. I didn't like his higher register when he was like really talking the lyrics because he just sounded I don't know there was something weird about it it didn't seem like but the other small stone another man's grave we're not different anymore those when I heard the first song I was hooked because there's a part in it where he really does sound like belts it out and he sounds like Elvis. and it's almost like it gives me this early 70s Vegas feel like he's like a balladeer he's a crooner and I thought man this is going to be really cool and then some of the other songs where it was just like it's just really weird and then I would I would just be taken out of it but then it would come in with like another man's grave. And I'm like, man, this is really cool. Cause he was like a little lower register. It sounded a little meaner, a little more serious. And then it would go into, you know, something else goofy. And then I'd be like, I don't, and then it would go into different anymore, which I thought was a great tune. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird. Cause like when I listen to it, every time I kind of hear the lyrics a little differently, or I pick up on another line mm -hmm. that he says that I, for some reason kind of glossed over and then it sucks me back in with it. And, and that's, it, that's why I sent you that song from, uh, because I play Red Dead Redemption 2, which I think is the greatest yeah. game ever made. <laughs> it's like the music in that game is insane. And that song I sent you is kind of what it reminded me of. It was almost like this Western folk feel to it. So I loved it. So to me, it's like a 50-50. It's 50% 50. 50 of it I thought was really cool. And it really got me in that headspace. And then the other 50%, I was yeah, like... That's, yeah, that cool. would kind of be like his previous album. It's got you know, a little variation to it like that too, but... I, I myself also prefer his more straightforward, mellow stuff because it's just so morose sounding, depressing. But I love that because that kind of music always makes me feel happy. You know, yeah. I listen to Sisters. I listen to Sisters of Mercy, and I like I feel enlightened. You know, I, you know, which is the yeah. I'm the same way with Fields the Nephilim. I just wish that. On the, the first track, Small Stone, towards the end, when he really belts it out, and he sounds like Elvis to me. Yeah, yeah when he, yeah, yeah. When he crescendos know, up. and That is what I wanted for the rest of the album. That I, want, I don't want to hear his, like, dorky voice. I want to hear that voice, because he's a really good singer. I agree with that. When he, really, when, yeah, when he, when, he, when he goes up in that register. Yeah. So so great because yeah, the, the first song was pretty good, pretty good, and then when he went up there with that like emotional wail, oh my god, it was great. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> so 
I mean, I'll, it's not something I'll buy, but it's something I'm going to be on the lookout for to see what else. Because I've been watching like live shit from them, acoustic stuff here and there just to see. Um, oh, if he comes to town, I'm going to go buy a ticket for sure. Uh, he's definitely talented. Man. Jason, he's playing in Vegas in August. Is he? Yeah, as part of the big oh, best, whatever that, whatever the psych, psycho, psycho Vegas. Vegas. How is he playing that? Mm-hmm. I'll, get a ticket, I'll get a ticket for Matt. He'll love it. <laughs> There's some good bands there. I think uh, Danzig's going to be playing yep. Lucky Fuggy. Yep, Danzig's Lucky playing Lucky Fuggy, Fuggy in its entirety. <laughs> Lucky Fuggy. <laughs> Very what nice. Do what do you think, Jay? Um, I still need, no, I mean, I've listened to it, but it's like that it's completely out of left field. Mine were like all questions. I'm trying to nail down the genre. I wrote down, is this country? Is this a soundtrack of a play? Is this like the rejected soundtrack to Blazing Saddles? (laughs) I guess I was like, maybe if Vincent Price like backing speaking parts it would be a better album and when you said murder murder folk is that the genre that's uh, i wrote down i wrote down vincent price i was like oh okay now okay maybe that is it then i wrote down is it horror country um it did does he worship marty robbins is this like a gunfighter album like a gunfighter ballad so um yeah, I just still trying to process all of it. It's sure it sure is different. I uh I'm not I, I don't have many murder folk albums in my collection. <laughs> so. I've got like forty. Do you? <laughs> Interesting. Really cool. yeah, so. I love the album cover. Yeah. I'm gonna have to bone up on my murder folk. <laughs> I love the album cover and I love the name Amigo the Devil. I thought that was really cool. Like I, I think everything about it's cool. To me, it was just like an EP where I could take half of it. The other half, I could throow it away with Jordan Rudess's keyboards. So <laughs> yeah, and maybe and maybe the album cover. I think maybe he was trying to get like a Charles Manson kind of effect out of that picture for sure yeah so definitely out there to shock everybody for sure <clears throat> definitely a weird one that got me to you know listen yeah, that's, to that's the left field definitely now, now pat is that your number one in the past five years I didn't rank them like that it was just this okay. this was just like because okay. it hit me so hard i was just like I got to put this on there because it's been a while since I've had a band come along where I just get engrossed by it and then like start buying shit and listening to it nonstop, you know, because when I came up with the list, I was like, oh, shit, Agalock Agalock had to have had a band like an album out in the last five years before they broke up and then had to look and realize that was like whatever 2013. So I was kind of struggling at a level. So. All right, Kip, let's get shit over with. That's all you, Nick. You got one more, yeah. right? Oh, oh, you're right. You're very right. I just wanted to get your shit over with, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to prolong it. Okay. All right. My uh, number one of 2019 when it came out, and this is the one. I don't know why we say, like, let's all make sure you listen to one, because it sounds like we're listening to all of them anyway, so we should probably stop. Yeah. Saying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a Polish pagan metal band that this is again their only album and they're not a, on title they're not on title they're not on title like they don't own my car no they're not on title the streaming service oh they're not on title okay they, good, good to know I thought you said they're not on my title <laughs> okay is Borknagar's title on title hmm is Borknagar's title on title? Probably. Okay. Well, no, on, on, uh, 
on uh, True North, Bork Nagar has a song named Title. Oh, yeah, so true. Title on Title. <laughs> God damn it! My joke sucks. Just move on, man. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if I was to tell someone that I was into heavy metal, blah blah, blah I'm like, oh, I know black metal. That if I if I was supposed to describe what pagan metal sounded like, this would probably be one of my go tos. It's only two years old, but this is also one of the uh, black metal, paganish metal albums where the bass is so goddamn prevalent. That's one reason why I fell in love with it because the bass player was just like, like he's not shredding, but it's so prominent, so high in the mix. It's like if Steve Harris was in a, is in a pagan metal band. Uh, the band is Polish, Popoy? Popoy. P. Popoy, P O P I O with an accent, L with a slash, Popoy. Zabobany is the album. This was my number one in 2019. It's um, it's tribal. The drums aren't ever like blistering, blastering. It's a lot of toms, you know, like, like summoning. Had a drummer that was playing actual drums because it's it's just a groove going on. The bass is so prevalent. There's heavy vocals. There's vocals that are clean, aren't clean because they're not sung. They're just like a guy, not throat singing like Mongolian throat style, but just like aching out and just like crying out in a, in a weird ass way. Uh, it's just another album from the last couple of years that I heard is like, I, it, it fits the genre of pagan metal, but it just, it, it, it's, it was completely refreshing. Like they kind of rewrote the barriers or the, the definitions of what pagan metal should be. So it just, yeah, you know, I, I the, the second I heard it, just like I, this band needs to release another album now. I, uh, this is another one I wrote down to get. Um, I, it might piss you off, but what I heard with the bass playing, um, it really reminded me it's weird how people have different things, but it reminded me of Tool, the way the bass was. Mm -hmm. It didn't sound like Tool, but it just reminded me. Well, it was just because the the the, the effect, the, the pedals on it were different, but the way it's forefronted for sure and and feet and feet because it was really bass heavy, but it was good. There was a lot of like like dark psychedelic moments to it, in my opinion. Um, I got a lot of. Moonspell vibes, only if they were like more Polish black metal. Uh, all this stuff to me is far superior than just like straight blasting black metal. This stuff, like this album was just awesome because it's like when I listen to albums like this or the the Maleth or I have a Bruno, I'm always thinking, man, what's next? Where they get? What are they going to do next? You know? And it was. Track three, I'm not even going to fucking attempt. <laughs> Track three is the one that kind of sucked me in. Um, I dug it, man. Isn't track three just like the the chant, the more chanty one, or is that track four? I think it's four. Three is the one that has like the bass intro. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it's, it, it, I was just looking through the CD because I was trying to remember, like, it, it seems like the bassists wrote the songs because they're so bass-driven. Yeah. Like, I, I, it didn't say who wrote the songs, but I wouldn't be shocked if that guy wrote 90% of the music because almost every song has a bass breakdown where he's always playing the bass like a guitar, like full chords and or, arpeggiated chords and the tone on that thing. And even when the whole band's playing, the, ba the bass is still just so prevalent. Loved yeah. it. I don't know. The song is Vilcha Yagodi. Yeah. Okay, consonants. That's all I know. A bunch of, a bunch of accents and weird ass symbols. Yeah. I tried to I tried to pimp this album on the board back in nineteen. Like in the you know great albums of 2019, and no one bit. 
and I was the only one that voted for it, my number one. So it ranked like number 99 overall because I was the only one. Like, just listen to this thing, please. Some of you will like this. And no, no one, no one bit. That's really? fine. Yeah. That's kind of surprising thinking about it because, you know, there's a definite core group of people there that would like that album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. Well, it, it didn't rate, Nick, because it's not on title. <laughs> All right, right, Solomon. (laughs) What what does Castro think? How many strains? How many strains of gonorrhea is this album? (laughs) I don't think he's ever heard it. He, I might have told him to listen to it, but I don't know if he ever did. So I think that that this could have been one from last episode, like an album that no one knows about. But I kind of went with older albums since this is only 2019. But this easily could have been on that last episode. Very cool stuff. Yeah, I put down, I dug the change up in the vocals. I was going to make the comment. I thought this was a black metal band, so I need tutoring on pagan versus black metal. And that's what I wrote down. I'm like, this black metal band has killer bass. So I wrote down cool acoustic interlude in the middle of track four. The bass interlude on track six is great. And yet another one that... I'm considering purchasing. After three, I three for three over the have a crooner. So yeah, it's it's possible. I mean, I could buy all three of yours. This is crazy. <laughs> My brain, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So how do uh, how do you pronounce it again? Is it Pope? Pope Boy? Pope Boy. Yeah, I, I try to do a Google Translate, and that's what it kind of came out to. I know the L with the slash is a W, so Popiel. Popiel. Yeah, I put it on my list as well for, you know, a potential purchase. I don't know if it's like something you have to order through Bandcamp or because that's where I listen to it through or what, but if I want to get a physical copy, but... Kind of the same like the musicianship surprised me it was one of those like looking at the name looking at the cover you know i didn't and know which debut. direction it was going to go in and you know good music for a debut yeah are they from anything else or any nope. other lineage or history that you know of no nope. are they from are they from galicia <laughs> <No>. that's <laughs> in spain this is poland D- different countries jason <laughs> Zaboni doth rock. Yeah, the Zabo- Zabobani. Zabobani. So. Zabobani doth rock. Jason, J- Jason, give me some time, and I'll, 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 you'll, you'll hear the slight nuances between pagan and black metal. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on you, buddy. All right. Sounds you may good. like going back to just if more, you know, also getting with more straightforward stuff like Manigarm, those kind of bands, like earlier Manigarm or middle. Yeah. Yeah. What about them? I think Jason would oh. would appreciate those now, you know, like Dodes Fart or whatever. Yeah, Virgin's Kid for sure. Yeah. 100%. Well, good. Well, allow me to yep. torture with my third orchard neck. So I know I, I know I'm gonna probably get a lot of shit for this because it's not it's it seems to be the the thing to do because the kind of classic vocalists actually the classic brothers are gone and uh, this band I, I think just kind of gets they they put out several albums that I think were complete shit. Um, and then they came back in 2006 with Dante 21, which I thought was excellent. And I, I worked, uh, again, I was like around the time I worked at a record store and I, I just checked it out and it hooked me. And ever since then, I've been buying every one of their albums. And I think that they're not as good as the classic stuff, but they're just a step below. Um, this new one, uh, obviously, I'll just t- get to the band Sepultura, the uh, Quadra, newest album, uh, 2020. 
these guys are still going strong. I'm glad they don't sound like Blue Mains. I'm glad it doesn't really sound like Arise. It's more in the vein of like Chaos AD, but not even really that. They kind of do their own thing now. Um, the crappiness of like against Nation and Warback, all that is gone. You know, Andreas Kisser to me is the sound of Sepultura because of his guitar playing. And the thing that really gets me, I love Derek Green's vocals. Um, he's been in the band longer than Max Cavalera ever was. I think Probably. they've gotten they've gotten stronger too. Yeah, the vocals like because that was a problem for me early on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it's probably blasphemy to say for some people, but the drummer now, Eloy Casagrande, is he absolutely just shreds Igor Cavalera. He just I, mean, I love the fact that his last name translates to big house. <laughs> I agree with that. Like I, I'm not a big Sepultura fan, obviously, but I was definitely enjoying the drumming. Hundred percent. He's he's nuts, man. I I I don't know if you guys watched. I sent that video where he was fourteen playing live, just like a drum solo at a, a drum show, and it's like nuts, man. This dude is. He had a, a drummer be, between. I think his name was John Dolabella, and John was he was good, but Eloy has the attitude and the punch that Igor had. But he's just way, he's way more technically, like he is, to me, like the Mike Portnoy of this band, where he literally is a, an excellent drummer. He's not just like some dude that sits behind the kitten. He just happens to be good. Like, this is a guy that really, I think, studies the drums, studies music. And, uh, but this album is, Means to an End is probably my top track. Um, isolation is great. The pentagram they have, like the thrash is back in, on some tracks. It's tribal, but it's tribal without being like Janko jeans and ball bearing necklaces. It's like tribal. It's not roots. It's not roots. It's not roots. It's like they they add the tribal into it, so it's more like an amorphous style where they take the Finnish folk music and add it to it. It doesn't sound corny, it doesn't sound cheap now. On Roots it did, against Alt Nation, those are, uh, those are just awful. And ever since then, they've just been putting album after album after album out that I think is just solid. And I always tell people, man, I'm like, if you're looking for Beneath the Remains or Arise, you, you ain't gonna get it. But if you want good, heavy metal and you know this band's totally respectable and still going strong and most of my friends around here that i've played this for they're just like man i'm not listening to that and then i'll play it and they'll be like this is new sepultura and i'm like yeah man and i think they're a little blown away by it so that's that's the pick i mean so i didn't hate it as much as i wanted to Um, again, during the, when the vocalist was going, it was just traditional thrash, not that into it, but like the, 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 the bridges, the solo sections were freaking great, actually. Mm-hmm. The intros, the interludes, whatever, but what it was, you know, just when the vocalist was singing, doing his, his verses and choruses, whatever. But as soon as the vocalist stopped and they stopped that repetitive thrash style, actually like the, the instrumental sections, solo sections, didn't sound thrashy at all. They sound just like like classical to me. Yeah. And very and like amazing musicianship without being like ridiculously over technical. Uh, I just wish they would just release an instrumental album without those <laughs> generic ass thrash riffs. But once they once they stood away once they stepped away from that thrash sound and went into the other stuff, I actually found myself going like, wow, this is freaking really good. Wow. And, then, and then they brought the then they brought the chorus back and verse back the first song about being in prison like oh <laughs> you're incarcerated or whatever like you're in the cell like oh god just stop that shut up get back to that middle section where is just the the bridge with the solos that was great 
<laughs> you were waiting for a song about the greenhouse effect coming up next. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that first song, uh, this it kind of was Sepultura for me. It's tough because after was it had to have been nation i just totally wrote them off didn't didn't give them the time of day because i was so bummed out by the slew of shitty albums they had after chaos ad and uh sometime well this would have been around 2010 or well whenever um when did alex come out not 2009 so yeah, so around that time I was on another board as well as the Brave board and Kid Rock's penis, if you remember him, was like talking about modern Sepultura and that they had actually turned a corner and were putting out good shit. So we communicated via the board and it got me to buy like Alex and Dante and whatever else. Um, and I actually, those albums were really good, but then I just kind of let them fall by the wayside again. So I hadn't heard a note from them since 2009. So this one, that first track really hit me out, hit off as kind of like, it really reminded me of Slayer, good Slayer. And, uh, you know, so uh, just that intro kind of got me hooked again, thinking like, oh, I need to start working my way back because I've, I went through a second period of writing them off you know, and I just, I don't, I don't know anything about what they've put out since then. And if this is any indication, you're saying they've been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Kip, it's totally something that I'll have to evaluate over time because, I, you know, I held them in such regard with those, you know, late eighties, early nineties records that when they fell, they fell hard. And when I got back into them, I enjoyed them, but not at the same level. But then this kind of rejuvenated that for me of thinking like, oh, they, you know, they've got longevity for a reason. Mm -hmm. you know? Very cool. Let's say you, Jay. This is their 15th album. And there's just, there's something I'm missing. Um, I don't know. I just can't get into Derek Green. I, I hear maybe it's a mental thing, but it's like I hear Phil Anselmo post vulgar display of power and everything after vulgar display of power I have not enjoyed for. So right now my brain is equating it to that kind of extreme vocal that just turns me off. So maybe I only listen to it once. Maybe I need to go back to it. But I mean, you know me, I, I love Thrash and the music's there, but it's that Derek Green wall that is telling me to stop just like it's doing with Castro. Stop right now, turn around and go change your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that. Uh, Max has a very distinct voice. And so he, unique. He's very yeah. unique. And he still sounds good. I think that Soulfly and Sepultura almost at the same time kind of turned the corner. And so Soulfly put out Dark Ages, um, which blew me away because Soulfly sucks. And I hated that shit. That was like baggy pants crap. I absolutely despised that band. And then Dark Ages came out and I thought, holy shit, dude, this is like, this is like Beneath the Remains. You know, some of the stuff. And it seems like since then, they've been trying to fight who's going to put the better album out, at least in my, the way I'm hearing it. And I just think that Sepultura has more variation to their music and they're doing, they're not afraid to go outside of the box and do different things. And I think it just comes off as better. And Soulfly just kind of hit a plateau and then every album was so, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's not bad, but then I hear Sepultura stuff, the newer stuff, and I'm like, man, so awesome, you know. And but, but yeah, Derek Green sounds the same um, on a lot of the other stuff. So yeah, he's like my kryptonite for the band these days. Yeah. I'll give uh, 
two real quick honorable mentions. Deceased, ghostly white. This band can that's, do it wrong as far as I'm concerned. That's um, a great album. Great album. King Fowley is a legend. I mean, the guy, this band just continues to put out great album after great album after great album. I know he pisses a lot of people off online. I know, you know, buddy Randy and I, you guys know Randy. Um, we always text back and forth each other, just kind of joking because he's so opinionated. He is like the blue hair. He's like King Blue Hair. But uh, King Fowley, that is. But, then, but he still puts out excellent shit. And I love that he's on Hell's Head Bangers. Um, they're like this like kind of secret that, Jason, I really think that you would love. Yeah. You would. I would say that or any of the two previous. Yeah. This is not death metal. It's the early stuff is this is more it's like just old school metal um i'll send you some stuff but i really think that this is right up your alley like um horror all the lyrics are like horror movies and i mean there's so many lyrics per song you know that's one song <laughs> just running them off and they're great live too but he he is a fucking showman live man. I've seen him play at the uh, Beachland Tavern, and then I saw him at the. I buy shirts off of him, like bootleg shirts, and then I saw him at the the Foundry, uh, and they opened for Razor. And um, he walked up. I'd never met the dude, but I always bought shirts. I kind of corresponded with him on uh, through Facebook, and then I I went up to him. I was like, hey. How you doing? And he was like, yeah, Kip, what's going on? And I was like, I've never even met you. And he was like, I totally recognize you. Don't. He was the nicest guy. He threw me a bunch of merch, just like piling up and shit. He was so awesome. I mean, he is like, he's a true fan of music and he treats people with total respect. Um, the other one is a new one that probably would have been my album of the year last year other than low rider refractions and that is witch hazel and cost this is i haven't stopped listening to this since you know i first started <laughs> i ignored it i ignored all their other albums and this is like it's like if robin hood played new wave of british heavy metal it's thin lizzy wishbone ash run through that early 80s british sound and I, i'm just stoked to see where these guys are going to go next every song is catchy i even came home tonight my wife was making dinner and she was blasting this so it's really first, good you sent me that you sent us that link and you're like i think you guys will like this and i clicked and i'm like dude i like this shit too man this is freaking great i didn't think i don't know sometimes i'm it, to me, it's like, oh, but maybe if it's more like New Wave of British Heavy Metal. But when you said you did, I was like, wow, that's really cool, man. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. So those are my two uh, two picks. This you nice. can get off Bandcamp uh, really cheap. It's like 10 bucks. Get onto their Bandcamp and um, look for the one that says shipped from U.S. Because there's others that say shipped from U.K. And I think this was 10 maybe like three or four bucks shipping. So. And this you can get off of Hellside Bangers, which is an amazing label. Check it out, Jason, because I think that okay. even check yeah, out- I wrote, it. I, wrote, I wrote both of them down. Because I think, yeah. they, I think a Hellside Bangers has a fucking tankard t-shirt on there. So you might want to check it out. <laughs> All right, my two. My two. Uh, First one, uh, this came out uh, last month. Uh, I took the boy to the famous Hollywood Palladium to see these guys. I want to say it was October of 2018. They put on a great show. Uh, they put out uh, an album uh, before, three or four years ago. And I thought it was a letdown. 
this one, they just put it out, like I said, last month. I think it's great. I think it's back to form. The angst is back. The swagger is back. I was just listening to this on the way home, along with the amorphous. And that is the Dropkick Murphys with uh, Turn Up That Dial. Um, I think right now it's probably the best punk rock band going right now. I love my Irish punk. I know a lot of people don't. Um, and then the other one. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs> um, the, uh, let's see, my other one. Do I go with the best American thrash band going today or the best German thrash band going today? And I'm going to choose the German thrash band. They just put out an album last year. This one just clicks for me. I think this is probably the best thrash band or the best thrash album that's been put out in the last five years. And that's uh, Sodom's Genesis 19. Yeah. Those are my honorable mentions. Excellent. That's Sodom rules. Frank Black. Oh, my God. That's a ripper. Just every song. Yeah. Yeah. Just totally back to form. And, you know, Tom um, kind of, uh, how do I do that? Kind of uh, experimented with maybe his death metal voice uh, in Code Red years ago. But this one's just, just the pure thrash voice that I really, really like. And uh, I think the band is in top form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. How about you, Pat? How about you, Pat? Um, my two honorable mentions. One of these could have snuck in had I not discovered Amigo the Devil last month. So one of them would be... I don't know if you can see it. There's a glare. How about that? Tyler Childers, Purgatory from 2017. Country from uh, Kentucky. Um, back in 2016 through 2019, I was hanging out with a guy I worked with quite a bit. And he was a big country guy, not metal at all. I've always pretty much steered clear of country. Um, but he kind of turned me on to a couple guys that opened me up to country music so there was a but now i've expanded to maybe a roster of about six or seven country artists that i like tyler childers being one this album to me is a perfect album um not is a bad track on it is that the guy that blasphemate loves a lot he loves some new country no, guy. he's uh, chris stapleton oh, okay uh, pretty sure Chris Stapleton, yeah. Um, seen him a couple times and puts on a great show. Now he's gotten huge to where you can't see him, but maybe in an arena. So days of seeing him are gone. So that kind of allure is over. The other one would be 2018's Cody Jinks Lifers album, another country guy. This was the band or the guy that my friend got me into. And when I got into it, I kind of went all in on Cody Jinx because from 2017 to 2019, I saw him eight times live because he basically lives on the road. He's someone that's also kind of exploded to now playing larger theaters, smaller arenas, when before you could see him in small bars, small clubs. But this album here, I love for a lot of reasons, but it also has a lot of the co-writing credits go towards the other four or five country artists I like, Ward Davis, Tennessee Jet, uh, Whitey Morgan. He often covers Billy Don Burns, an old school outlaw country guy that I like to some degree. But um, this album, it's got a song called Head Case on it. Jason, you gotta listen to it. It's like you're listening to a reimagined version of Dust in the Wind by Kansas. It's the closing right. track on the album. Plus, he throws a shout out to uh, um, Jackson Brown song on there. So, you know, you know, I also got to mention, it's not one of mine, but 
Rocky Dennis would uh, chastise all of us for no one mentioning Yob, our raw heart from 2018, which is a very solid record. And, and, and Pat, do you have the uh, kind of like the story of Cody Jinx? You could probably tell it better than I. Because he, he, was like in a, he, was a, he was a metal guy growing up, which he was in a band called Unchecked Aggression, which has one CD out, which I bought for $45 on eBay. He's from Texas. He was a big Pantera fan. I was never a Pantera fan. It's in that realm. He moved out to Los Angeles to kind of chase his music dreams. Didn't work out. Moved back and he had like country roots coming from Texas and started just basically living on the road and doing his own thing. So he just started pumping out albums and you watch old videos from the early 2010s, 2012s, and he's playing the, you know, shit, you know, less people than uh, Jack Russell's great white at an arena football game. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like kind of cool to see the progression and then, you know, seeing him in like a club that's packed and hot and sweaty, which I'm still more terrified of country fans than I am metal fans. Give me a fucking napalm death show with a crazy pit over a bunch of drunk dudes drinking Coors Light because it's fucking hairy when you're trying to make your way to the bar to get a beer and then try to weasel your way back up to where you were kind of standing in the crowd because it's, it's a different vibe. I'll say that. Hey, I've seen Hank the Third twice, and it was two of the rowdiest shows I've ever been to. And they had big fifty-gallon wooden like barrels filled with ice and uh, PBR tall boys for a buck. <laughs> and it, it's it's definitely a by the end of the definitely show. a rougher crowd. I'll, I'll say it's. Uh, I, I mean, I feel a lot of sorts, you know, at those shows, mm-hmm. you know, and I've been to, like I said, eight drink shows and probably another 10 of those core group of country guys that I like. And it, it's not for a metal fan. Okay. All right. I'll close it out with my two honorables. Uh, this first one, Finnish uh, black metal band that started off pretty raw black metal. I think I have five albums, maybe six off the top of my head. I can't remember, but every one sounds different. Started off pretty raw, blistering black metal, then went into more acoustic, interlude not folky, but folk tinged, uh, but still pretty raw. And then they started introducing some more like kind of, again, not clean vocals, but more of those pagan vocals. And then uh, this last one that came out in 2017 started kind of, it's, it's still pretty aggressive black metal but then started introducing some like interludes with like um with just neoclassical kind of solos which is very new for them this is 2017's goat moon album oh dude stella polaris it's only 33 minutes short sweet the whole the whole discography is flawless it's one of my favorite bands but this just showed a whole new light to them like it, it just Within the 10 years where they came from with just really raw finished black metal to this, just it, it again, like you could buy any album by them and buy another one by them. Like, is this the same band? Like, every album is, is totally different. So, my shout out to Black Goat Grave Desecrator, the main guy behind it. Incredible. Skip, you know that one? Or you, you, you're a goat moon guy? Oh, uh, yeah. I love, I love the covers like uh, acid etched. Yeah. It's like, here? Yeah, I got it. Look at uh, the guy. Look at the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I like. Uh, yeah, dude. No, this album is. This album is awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Totally awesome. And then the other one that uh, I wanted to put in there, but I already had one folky metal. But this is a, a Russian band who had an awesome. They, they put this. They're like I think they're pretty much before Arcona. They they, they put Russian folk pig and metal on the map and they broke up in 08 now like 06 and then they came back together 12 years later and released this and so if you want good russian folk metal with like 
in between, like it, while the black metal riff is going, there's Bailey like a tremolo guitar riffs, or not guitar, but by, tremolo Bailey like a riffs going on in the music. It's a band called Pagan Rain, and the album once again from 2018. This is my number one of 2018. It's maybe not as good as I wanted it to be it's amazing but i put it my number one because it was a 12 year hiatus and then they released this thing and it felt like they never broke up it's the first album that's in english but that, that, that's the one deter for me because i liked it when they were singing in russian so i don't have to hear really shitty lyrics <laughs> just sing in russian so i don't know what you're trying to say please but if you want awesome mandolin body like a uh, obviously just Russian through and through black metal. That's a band you can't go wrong with. First album's okay, but albums two, three, four are just gems. And then they came out with this one in 18. And it's just, it, it felt like it was 2004 again when I was listening to it. So, very cool. Well, I think that was uh, another great and uh, expensive episode for me with all the shit that I wrote down. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I, there's about there's definitely two or three or four albums I'm definitely going to be looking up for, especially the Sepultura and the Sons of Apollo for you. I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Actually, during this episode, you couldn't see, but I got a Sons of Apollo tattoo on my back <laughs> during this. <laughs> With a heart on your arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, definitely reconvene here. Let's think of another. Uh, great episode that we can do and uh we'll come back yeah, this, one, this one was fun yeah and, uh, just total ear opener for me totally it was a butt opener for kid <laughs> yeah i got my ass handed to me on this one <laughs> but uh no that's fine man that's why i like doing these i like getting everybody's you know opinions on things and I just can't wait till the next one. I write down another five albums that I get to buy, and uh, yeah. my wife yells at me because my collection just keeps growing and growing and growing. And uh, I came home the other day, and Eric was like, "There's four packages waiting for you. One's from Belarus, one's from Portugal, one's from Chile, or something like that." <laughs> I know she's on always like Galicia, <laughs> Galicia. He's always like, is that another CD? I'm like, no, no. I, I don't know what that is. No. I, I just like run inside and open it and try to like... Hide the evidence. It. Yeah. <laughs> but I did that too many times now. There's like CDs stacked on the floor coming up and she's like... She's like I think we another rack. But, uh, <laughs> yep, another rack. <laughs> Thanks Good. a lot, guys. Yet again, another great episode and... Uh, Loved it. So much fun. Put this on yeah. YouTube and anybody that watches, uh, be sure to su subscribe if you want <laughs> and check out more. And uh, we'll be back here uh, soon. So thanks for watching.